This is the second video in my series, The 10 Sexual Sins of the Narc. And again, you're not going to hear this probably anywhere else. Not anywhere near the church or the Christian community, at least most of it. Let's continue with the third sexual sin of the narc. Pornography. Very, very common in narcs. About 90%, at least in my experience, if not more closer to 95%. Porn is incredibly easy to access on the internet thanks to Satan. Small s. It runs the gamut from soft porn, which is still porn, bikini models, lingerie models, sports illustrated, swimsuit edition, which should be put in the trash and burned to all kinds of filth and degradation. The gamut. The typical narc will access porn whenever he can. He feels zero guilt for his porn because he has no conscience and he enjoys it. He prefers the naked bodies he sees and the sexual acts he sees to your body and sex with you, which the Bible teaches should be his exclusive priority. When the narc is caught viewing porn, he'll deny it, of course. He has no idea why it's on his phone, tablet, or computer. How could this possibly happen? It's a conspiracy of some kind. Or he'll admit it, say he's sorry, and promise to never do it again, which is a lie. He'll do it again. He won't stop doing it. He'll demand you forgive him immediately, like within five minutes of finding out, and never bring it up again. And if you do bring it up again, then that becomes the issue, not that he's done it. Or he'll say porn is normal. All guys do it. It's not hurting anyone. Lie, lie, lie. Porn is sexual sin. It is adultery. That's what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 28. Listen to Jesus Christ's definition of adultery. But I say, anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay, that's pretty clear. You don't have to have graduated from two seminaries, which I have, to figure that one out. I'll go with Jesus on this one, and in fact, on everyone. Porn is lust, he says, and lust is adultery. People, especially Christian people, say that porn is bad, it's sin, okay, fine, but it's not actually adultery. It's not as serious and damaging as physical adultery. Many pastors believe that. They're absolutely clueless. Baloney, not true. Jesus says it's adultery, period. And all guys do not do it. Now, all men struggle, or most men struggle, with sexual temptation but not all view porn. That's a choice. That's a sinful choice. And it does great harm because it's adultery to the narc, even though he's too stupid and arrogant to know it. Who cares about him anyway? But, but look, listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Run from sexual sin, Paul says, exclamation mark. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. You do damage to your own body and frankly, to your mind too. Now, we know it does great harm to you, his spouse. Every wife I've spoken to in 40 years of clinical practice has been deeply wounded by her husband's use of porn. Every single one, deeply wounded. And of course, porn destroys the marriage. That's why Jesus in Matthew 19, seven through nine, says adultery is a reason for divorce. Porn, which is adultery, ends the marriage, destroys it. Now, if you're married to a non-narc, who truly repents and gets into recovery from pornography and helps you heal, you can build a new marriage. I help hundreds of couples do that when I was working with couples. But if you're married to a narc, different story. He won't truly repent. He won't get into recovery. He won't help you heal. So whether you stay with him or not, the marriage is in fact over. The narc may even have the nerve to ask you to watch porn with him. And I've had many ladies to their regret say to me, you know, Dave, I, I know it was wrong, but I, I thought maybe if, if it helped us together, I would do it. Oh, and then, then they end up regretting that, watching that garbage. Don't get into the sewer with him. If you're doing it, stop doing it. Confess it, move on. And of course, the narc will blame you for his porn. Of course, it's your fault because you're not meeting his sexual needs. Beyond the fact that no one can meet the narc's sexual needs, they're insatiable, his porn use was 100% his fault. Of course it is. The fourth sexual sin of the narc is emotional adultery. Here, the narc has no physical contact with the skank, but he engages in personal, intimate, and sexual communication with the skank. I wanted to say skank twice, because any woman who has this kind of communication with a married man is a skank. Okay, that's four times. Although the skank is not your problem, the narc is your problem. 
these nasty sexual connections happen through social media, emails, texts, FaceTime, phone calls, dating apps. He'll have emotional adultery with old girlfriends I mean, from middle school, high school, college, years ago. The narc catalogs those women and never forgets them. He loves to hook back up with them. I still have feelings for Susie. No, you don't. You just want to use her. Ex-wives are on the list, co-workers, neighbors, friends of yours, women he meets out and about. Anyone's a potential victim. And of course, if it's a skank, she isn't a victim. She is involved in it herself. Now, make no mistake, an emotional relationship with a skanky woman is adultery, full-blown adultery. It qualifies as Matthew 5, 28 adultery because the narc is obviously lusting after the person. It is not platonic. It is not a friendship. An acquaintance, it's someone he wants sexually, thinks about sexually. And very often, of course, there's sexting, there's all kinds of sexual content in this emotional adultery. When you discover the narc's emotional adultery, he'll use the same responses as he does for porn. Denial, never happened. Admission, and I'm sorry, if, you, if you've got the evidence, I, oh, I'm sorry, I'll never happen again. I'll never do that again. You know, maybe. You may get that. Forgive me right now. Never bring it up again. It's not adultery, he might say. It's harmless. This isn't adultery. And you'll get people in the church to agree with him because they're clueless. And of course, he'll blame you. Same drill. Now, the fifth sexual sin of the narc is physical adultery, actual sexual contact. Uh, prostitutes, co-workers, clients, neighbors, friends of yours, massage parlors, strippers, skanks of all types and descriptions. When his physical adultery is discovered, he'll follow the same stupid, sinful series of responses as he, as he does to porn and emotional adultery. And his adultery will end up being your fault. It's always your fault. The narc will be outraged, outraged that you invaded his privacy by looking at his, how dare you look at my phone, my social media, my computer, my car, my briefcase. How dare you uncover my sexual sin? See, that becomes the issue and not what he did. You never apologize for uncovering it. The narc will attack you viciously to distract from his awful sin. He'll attack your appearance. You're fat, ugly, undesirable. You're frigid, cold in bed. He'll compare you to other women. Knox loved doing that. While she takes care of herself, oh, for heaven's sake, he married you. He'll attack your character, your mothering, your personality, all lies. The narc's message, you are so unattractive. You're such a terrible lover. You're such an awful wife that of course he was forced to get sex outside of the marriage. Pathetic. The capper is he'll accuse you of not trusting him in the sexual area. Wow, honey, why in the world would I not trust you when you've been involved in porn, emotional adultery, or you've actually slept with a skank? Can't imagine why. For heaven's sake, it's ridiculous. Of course you don't trust him. In fact, you'll never trust him again. You don't have to. You divorce him is what you do. And what will many church leaders and leaders in the Christian community do? I'm sad to say they'll give the narc a pass for his sexual sins. They just want you to stay married. They'll tell you that you, you are partly to blame. You, the victim, are partly to blame. You need to forgive. You need to not mention his sins again. You need to be a better wife and let's work on your marriage and not his sin. Dumb, stupid, wrong, unbiblical. And frankly, it's abusive. You hear that from any counselor Church leader, I don't care who it is. You, friend, you walk away from that person. Now more on the Christian community's response to the narc sexual sins in a later video in this series. Okay, here's the solution to these three sexual sins of the narc. Porn, emotional adultery, and physical adultery. And they're all adultery. Number one, don't waste time on marriage counseling. I'm begging you. It's a sexual sinner problem and a narc problem, not a marriage problem. You get your own individual counseling to heal from what he's done to you and get ready to leave him. I would recommend these books of mine. I wrote them for you to help you get out. I'm not just going to tell you to get out and you're married to a dirtball sex addict. No, and a narc. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Get my books from the website, David E. Clark, PhD.com, Clark with an E on the end of it. Enough is enough. This is your secret plan to get ready to leave, escaping your narcissist. This is the divorce process and you're divorcing him. You have every biblical right to do so. And get my video series from codependent to independent. 
All these resources, including my phone device, are on the website. Now, in my next video, we'll look at these next three sexual sins of an art. He accuses you of cheating, uses you sexually, and rejects you sexually.